Hey guys, welcome to Code Decode. Today we are going to cover some very frequently and very commonly asked SQL interview questions. So let's get started. Very important question that will be asked for sure in an interview is how to find the third highest salary given an employee table. So this is your employee table given to you, which has basically the ID, name and salary. You have some values inserted into it. How would you find the highest salary? Now, I'll give you an approach. Okay, so I've created this table for you in this table. Basically, this is the database. This is the employee test, which is the table that I've created for you employee test. These are the data I have created. So basically, if you can see, we have 1000, 1200, 1100, 1300 and 1400. Now, you will be asked about how to find the third highest salary. So what you what the first thing that you would do? The first thing that comes into your mind is select max of salary from your employee test table. That's the first thing comes to your mind whenever you think about fetching the highest salary. So great, you have 14,000 in place. What were the values we have? So if this is my table and I'm just giving you a salary information here. So my salary is in a descending order is so now you need maximum salary. This is how you have done that. Now for second max salary, what comes to your mind is okay. I have the max salary. I'll fetch the next thing. What I'll do is I'll create an inner query same as this. And this is how I'm fetching the maximum salary. That is 14,000. Now I'm creating the salary list whose salary is where salary is less than maximum salary so with this in place what will be your result of this query just 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 ignore the select and everything just this now what you will have here in places these values from 13 to 1000 so now you are asking for maximum salary out of these so what's the maximum salary that is 13 so now after executing this what you should get is 1300 okay so i have 1300 in place now you i wanted third highest salary i'll do the same thing again salary is less than again i'll put it in a query and select let's run this and see i get 1200 so this is the third highest salary so this is the requirement so great you have fulfilled your requirement you have your third highest salary in place that is 1200 but is this a feasible solution if i ask you find 1000 salary or the thousandth salary you won't be what will you be doing will you will be keeping uh, adding these inner queries and reducing your performance to an extent like anything this is not the right thing to do what is the right thing is now we will be explaining that to you so this is the wrong way if you are explaining this to an interview this can be good for few number of like first highest second highest or nth highest which you know the number but not for more than that it will decrease your performance so the best thing to do is first of all order everything by salary and then use limit so what we are doing here is in this uh, diagram also I'm, I'm actually sorting it in the descending order so this is the right thing to do what you should do is first of all order by salary that to in descending order from your table name what's your table employee test so this is the very first thing you should do now select from employee in the descending order in order so this is what you're getting are you getting the third highest salary no you are not getting the third highest salary how would you do that by using limit okay and in limit you have two things the first parameter is the starting index and one is the number of rows so what you so i'll just tell you how to fetch the first highest so this is the starting index so what's my starting index that is 14 so index always start from 0 1 2 3 and 4 what you need is 2 but currently i've used 0 so this is the first and number of rows to be fetched that is 1 so yes i can see that i have 1400 in my list so I can show you these are the number of columns. So if I say three, I should have three columns in place. So see, I have three columns in place in the descending order. With five in place, you have all the table with you. 14, 13, 12, 11 and 10. 
so this is what we have right 14 13 12 11 and 10 now i just want third highest salary so what's the in starting index of third highest salary that is 2 so i'm putting the first first argument as 2 and i just need one row for years if i run this i can see 1200 so this is the right way to handle this solution so what's the solution to this finding the third highest salary that is select your salary from your table order by salary in descending order and limited by 2 comma 1 if this is clear let me quickly move to the next question cryo.do is a platform that believes in learning by doing if you're trying to get into a good product based company and lacking in having some real time experience in project of front end back end and full stack development skills then this is the go to platform for you guys they have created some really extensive program which covers loads and loads of real world problem which you can add to your resume and stand out from the crowd and get some good experience in these kinds of skill sets here you can see some real world projects you can get the hands on with latest technical skills that i have told you definitely very extensive program with good mentorship support and doubt resolving sessions good number of projects and micro scaling exercises are also available they are also running one amazing program called as fellowship program in the software development with amazing placement guarantees free trials to all these programs are available you can definitely check them out and don't forget to check the link given in the description below because it will be very helpful to you with this link you will end up at the home page where you can get the coupon code with 10% discount and good percentage scholarship and few perks like free guide to product based company interviews resumes guide to mini projects that will be available to you at any sort of guidance all free so hurry up and check this out the very important question that will be for sure asked in every sql interview is that what are indexes and how do you create an index in sql and why is it that important you should know that indexes are database objects which help in retrieving records quickly and more efficiently columns indexes can be created on both tables and views by declaring a column as an index within a table of view user can access those records quickly by executing the indexes and hence indexes with more than one columns are called as clustered indexes not going too much into deep too much of theory understand that whenever you need to perform the retrieval on a particular table these retrieval operations are very costly so to increase the performance to reduce the time to retrieve a particular record from a database in a very large one you should create indexes the way to create indexes a simple one create index index name on table name and columns so suppose this is my table so let me create a table for you first now. okay so this is your table uh, I, I just have a query to find a person whose name is Manoj I select star from table where name is Manoj so if I write this query for you it will be like select Manoj if I do this, I should get every record of this Manoj, 4 Manoj 1300. So see, I get 4 Manoj 1300. Now, if I had thousands of rows in this particular uh, table, then what will happen? So you will search first, is this name Ani uh, Manoj? No, its name is Anish. Okay, go to second. Is the name Manoj? No, it's Sushan. Go to next. Rakesh? No, it's, it's not Manoj. Fourth, is it Manoj? Yes, it is Manoj. Retrieve and give it back. So this is so easy in terms of performance and quickness in, in just a small data table. But when it comes to thousands of rows in a table and suppose you have a very bad luck and that row comes to the end of your table, how much quickly will you be able to find it? Not, not that quickly. To reduce this retrieval time and this full table scan, you use indexes. So how do you use index? You create an index. The simple way to create an index is create index. Your index name is underscore index. Create index on your table name. So this is your table name. Now you need to give the column name. So what are your column names? I need to give it on name only. So let's try if this runs okay one success and index is created so how do you find so this can you see there is no plus sign here that means there is no indexes here because i have not refreshed my table yet as soon as i refresh my table you will be able to see name underscore index into it okay so see now this is a plus sign here and i can see my name index index here so if i try to edit this index you can see my name index is created in an ascending order with these all values 
okay so if this much is clear this is how you create an index and how do you drop an index a simple way is drop index index name on table table name so this is also simple if i try to run this now your index must be gone if it runs successfully so it's one success and it is dropped so if i try to refresh it it should not have the index again so if i try to open this see it's again the plus sign is gone that means there are no indexes on this table so this is how you create and uh, drop an index now you will ask me if this is how you can increase your performance how does it actually works internally so how do you, how does these indexes work internally suppose i have given an example we need to search with a name manoj what behind the scene is every single row is checked to see if employee name is matched with manoj if it doesn't it goes to the next line if it does it returns you the same this effectively means that entire table will have to be scanned if it is your last row if you have a bad luck enough for that so this is called as full table scan now what does index do to prevent this full table scan index is nothing but a data structure which is created by sql for you you don't have to worry about what data structure you need to create it is done internally with sql you don't have to do anything you just have to create and drop the way i have told you how to do it the the, the only thing you need to do is this create and drop so what it does internally is it is a data structure which is created which shows a specific column of the table so which is the column in our table that is the name which is created on our table and helps to avoid the full scan database indexing is in reality what it does is it allows to cut down the number of rows or records that will be examined when the select query with a where clause is executed so we had a select query with a where clause here to reduce your time and reduce the time in fetching each and every records value indexing is used now you'll ask me how so i have answer for that also so there are few data structures which are actually internally created with sql that is b tree hash hash table and bitmap now the most frequently used is b tree so this is what you should know about if you want to know more about these let me know in the comment section i'll cover how these also work internally but in the case of b tree the most commonly used data structure for indexes is b tree because it is efficient for looking up deletion and insertion now you know that the trees insertion deletion lookup is all order of log n which is much less than each and every basic searching so basically order of n so all these operations can be done in the logarithmic time that is order of log n and hence data is stored in a b tree that that can be sorted so trees can always be sorted so what the sql people do internally is whenever you create an index they create a binary tree in a sorted way and they store the data in suppose they have created an index in form of suppose b tree i'm not creating a b tree here but they are storing the names here because you have created a index on name so you have your indexes created you will ask me okay great you have created your binary tree good you have sorted it in an uh, in a in an ascending or the descending order depending on your index great how will you okay now even your searching becomes order of log n great but if i search for manoj i know that in order of log n time i'll reach to manoj how would you reach to manoj with the salary and the id so very good, great question there is the pointer which is connect which is connecting each and every index to the real data in the database so can you see if you reach to any of these in an index it's just order of one time to reach from amit to amit or manoj to the real data so basically what you are doing is you are reducing your lookup time to order of n to order of log n that's quick retrieval you are increasing the performance of table and hence your indexing works like this internally now query looks for a specific row in that index and index refers to the pointer which will find the rest of the information so that's how they work internally they basically stores the pointers and that particular pointer is taking you to the real data so this is how indexes work internally now you'll ask me what are the disadvantages of indexes the worst disadvantage of indexes if you can see in the image itself it is taking an extra space it's not just the table which is taking your space in your memory it's the index which is also taking up the memory if you have 10000 records then you have 
an index of 10,000 records also. So it takes additional space. So the larger the table, the bigger the index. And what was the second thing that you can find out from this is if I try to re remove this Anish from the table, you just don't have to remove it from table. You also remove the Anish from this index so that it doesn't find and try to go to that particular pointer location. So every time you perform an add, delete, update, the same operation will need to be performed in index as well. So these are the disadvantages. If we drop a table, does it also drop the objects like constraint, indexes, columns, views, stored procedures, everything? Answer is yes. As you drop the SQL table, all the related objects which exist inside the table like constraint, indexes, columns, defaults are all dropped. But no. What doesn't get dropped with the table deletion or table dropping is the views and the stored procedures. Why? They'll ask you for sure. Why does the view and stored procedure doesn't get deleted or dropped with the table dropping? That is because they exist outside the table. So these are the basics of database. You should know what exists inside the table and what all objects exists outside the table scope. So what all exists outside will not be deleted. Now I have many more things to cover like how do you tune your, tune your SQL queries like avoid views, avoid using select distincts, create join with inner joins and not where because where is a Cartesian product. I have so much to cover but time is not permitting me. So please let me know in the comment section if you want us to cover more such fine tune and best practices for SQL queries. Thank you.